They are Australia's tallest poppies, heroes amongst mere mortals. But what are the real stories behind these legends? Tonight, Tony Martin presents the true story of fine cotton. One of Australia's most remarkable, yet slowest racehorses. This is Tall Poppies. Australians love their horse racing. The thrill of the punt, the galloping hooves, the drama of a fall, and the muffled sound of a shotgun. It's good stuff. But there's one horse whose story stands above all others as the most extraordinary. This is the incredible true story of fine cotton. One of the biggest scandals in Turkey. A horse with different markings came to race here at Eagle Farm. To the alleged switch of bold personality for fine cotton. Race fixing, drugs, bribed jockeys, and illegal gambling. This scandal has set racing back 20 years. It's what do you suppose will happen to the real fine cotton? You see, fine cotton was a top horse. Very friendly. Kind of horse you want to have a beer with. But running it just wasn't his thing. Then it's two lengths back to Kinky Fruits and last of all, Fine Cotton. Boy, what a shit race off. Given how terrible Fine Cotton was at horse racing, his trainer thought, oh, maybe horse racing isn't for him. Enter Gold Coast con artist John Gillespie. With the surname of a jazz legend and the first name of heaps of people, John Gillespie was a petty crook with a brilliant idea. What if you had a horse that looks exactly like fine cotton but can actually run? <laughs> so they take their idea to businessman Robert North, explaining that by replacing a slow horse like fine cotton with a fast horse people think is fine cotton, you can win a ton of cash. Aren't you a criminal with literally hundreds of convictions? Yeah. I'm in. Now, not all horses look the same, despite what horse racers say. But Gillespie did his homework, and he finds one who looks almost identical to fine cotton, dashing solitaire. The only difference is he can run like the wind. So everything's set for the scam. But a week before the big race, Dashing Solitaire gets injured and can't run. <laughs> With heaps of money from a syndicate of crooks on the line, the crew are in deep horse shit. So they organised yet another replacement horse, Bold Personality. The issue now is he doesn't look anything like fine cotton. North understandably has some questions like, what is this bullshit horse and why is he f***ing orange? Or oh, their coats didn't match, so we covered him in ladies' hair dye. And just to confirm, this is really what happened. So they wash out the dye and hope to God no one will notice the difference, but then they realise fine cotton has white angles and bold personality doesn't. Luckily, they've got one more ace up their sleeve. We really did this too. So the big day arrives. The race that stops a nation, the biggest meet of the year, the peak of equine sports. The Eagle Farm Commerce Novice Second Division Handicap. And Fine Cotton is basically the favourite, which makes people suspicious because he's a properly shit racehorse. But Bold Personality doesn't care. He's there to run. And as far as anyone else knows, he is Fine Cotton. Racing now, and Fine Cotton is off to a good start, which is weird because he's such a shit racehorse. And round the bend they go. Suddenly, it's a two-horse race. Bold personality posing as Fine Cotton, neck and neck with Harbour Gold. Back and forth they go, until finally, by a head, Bold personality slash Fine Cotton wins. And Fine Cotton does it, and the truly unbelievable win by one of the country's shittest racehorses. Everything seems perfect. But this god-awful plan has a problem. The paint on Bold Personality's legs starts washing off. That's not fine cotton. Horses' legs don't just wash off. Well, some do. The jig is up. North, Haitana and Gillespie are arrested and barred from racing. For his part, Fine Cotton went on to live happily outside the spotlight to the ripe old horse age of 32, immortalised in history as a great Australian and a total dog shit racehorse.